Hi, it's Dorothy Guiding with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating a classic but very easy double page spread featuring Vicki Booten's print shop collection. If you are tuning in January 27th to 29th, 2023, the winter online crop is happening on the Scrapbook Nerd Friends Group Facebook page. There are prizes, challenges, and tons of inspiration. So head on over and I will put a link to that group below. Here is the material I'll be using. I have a bunch of paper and embellishments from Vicki Booten's print shop collection. And I love this collection. I love the jewel tones. It's very versatile, great for so many different stories. All of these products came from the Scrapbook Nerd online shop, so I will put links to the shop along with the products I use in the description box below. So let's jump right in. Now for this video I did very little planning in advance. I did select my photos and I selected my paper. Now you're going to see the photos I have backed with that green paper which is part of this print shop collection. However, when I started this project, I selected some photos, some colored prints of photos of me with my friends having coffee on a wintry afternoon with homemade cookies. That's kind of the story here. And there were a lot of colors in the photos and the paper there, that floral paper that has all of the colors from this collection, all of those colors were found in my photos. But my photos are really busy and that paper is really busy and I just found it too much. So what I did was I printed my photos in black and white. And even though there's still a lot in the photos, by removing the color, it seemed less busy. So for that reason, I go with black and white. Nevertheless, I did back my photos, the black and white ones, all except one because I'm still holding out. At this point, I'm thinking I may add one color print, but I don't make that decision till much later on in this video. So what I know I want to do is line up these photos across the two pages and create a strong border at the top of the page that spans across the two pages. And that's a very easy way to create a double page spread by creating a border that goes across the two pages. So my border is going to be made up of three different papers. So that's what you see me cutting up right now. Three for each side and I will put measurements for all of this on the screen a little bit later on. So what I want here are layered borders identical on the left and identical on the right. At one point I end up cutting myself a fourth strip of paper for each side that floats around my desk for a while, but I don't end up using it. So now I'm placing everything on the page, including my layered borders, to give you an idea, hand me an idea, of where I'm going with this layout. And I do like it so far, so I'm happy with all of this. Now before I adhere it together, I am going to apply a bit of ink to the edges of all of those border strips. So you're going to see me get out my ink in a minute. Actually, first you're going to see me cut down those strips of green paper that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just cutting these down at half an inch. Like I said, they float around my desk, but I don't end up using them. So at this point, I'm also kind of thinking I may put a border at the bottom, but I'm not sure. So I am going to work on that border at the top of the page. I am going to apply a bit of ink to the edges of all of those strips of paper. And the ink I'm getting out is Morning Mist by Versifying Claire. I often use this ink when I ink up layered photo mats or layered borders like what I'm doing right now. I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but I apply it to all six strips of paper. And then what you're going to see, I've adhered them all together. Each border with all three papers measures about three inches wide. And I adhered that to both foundation pages. So now I am placing all my photos on the page. You can see kind of where I'm going with this. And what I'm thinking at this point is I do want a border at the bottom and I just want it narrow. I want it to come below those two photos that you see on the right hand page. I was thinking of doing the floral print but I felt it had too much of a visual weight. That is 
a beautiful paper, but it has a huge impact on the page. So I decide to go with this striped print, which is more subtle, and I'm cutting them down at one inch each. And when I place them on the page, I feel like the photos on the right hand page are a little crowded. You're going to see what I mean in a minute because I want there to be a little bit of white space above and a little bit of white space below. And obviously the white space on the left hand page is bigger, but I have a plan for that a little bit later on. But instead of trimming down that one inch striped border, what I end up doing is trimming down those photos a bit. Basically, I take off a quarter inch of each of those photos, only in the width there. I'm cutting them down at three and a quarter inches, so they're still five inches long. And then what I'm doing with the photo mat is cutting them at three and a half inches. So I took a quarter inch off of each. And I'm happier with that. It gives me a little bit more space. For whatever reason, I just felt it would be better with the photos just a little bit smaller. So, and luckily I was able to do that because of the adhesive I use. I use uh, adhesive strips by Easy Runner, and even though they're permanent, I do have wiggle room. So for that reason, I was able to lift the photos off those photo mats and then re-adhere them without ripping any of the paper. Now what you see me doing is cutting another blue strip. Now this one I'm cutting it at one and a quarter inches and my plan is to literally adhere that striped paper on top of it and all that's popping out is one quarter inch which is identical to that quarter inch at the top of the page. I probably didn't need to do all of that but right now during the process it just seemed easier for me it was just a little bit less measuring and by the way all the measurements i'm putting on the screen are for visible page parts only so if you want to overlap like i do you have to cut them a little bit wider so you can see at the bottom i also inked those border strips as well and adhered them to the page and now i placed my photos and what i also did off camera is the photos on the left hand page i also trimmed down those a quarter inch as well along with the mat so they are basically the same size as the photos on the right page now i'm playing with a title and my plan is to fill up that big white space with a big dynamic title so i used a perfect day from the puffy title sheet from this print shop collection and i'm showing you i cut out with two different die sets from tim holtz the words with friends and for each one of those before i put the paper through my big shot with the die i backed the paper with those be creative tape sheets so what essentially i created here were self-adhesive alphas i absolutely love doing that and i will list those products below those dies are not available at the shop right now but other tim holtz dies are available along with other alpha dies i love my alpha dies but you know when you have a two inch alpha die you don't need to buy a second two inch alpha die set so i anyway you basically get your bang for your buck in my opinion i certainly do when i have alpha dies you can see i'm getting out all of my embellishing around me i haven't adhered my title right now and i have cardstock stickers, chipboard stickers, along with a floral ephemera pack. So I, I kind of divided it up into colors. And my plan is to create three embellishment clusters to create a visual triangle across the two pages, which is a great technique for creating a double page spread. I'm going to have two main embellishment clusters and then a small hint of a third one that I will create later on. And the two main ones are gonna be different sizes as well. So all three embellishment clusters will be different sizes. I start with the biggest pieces, which are the flowers, and then I'm going to come in with some leaves as well. So you can see I'm kind of working in that top right corner and it's going to kind of spread down over the title so that's going to be the most decorative place on these two pages these floral pieces are really fun to work with so i'm just playing around with them but at this point i'm getting this idea that maybe i would like to rip an area from that border at the top of the page and have the flowers peeking out from it so that's what you're going to see me do 
in the end, I'm not sure if it has much of an impact, but I go ahead anyway. Like I said, I didn't have much of a plan when I started this process of creating this video. So you're kind of getting a bit of my real thinking process when I have no planning at all. The problem is that blue border at the top, if I rip that floral paper at the top, there's nothing behind it because the blue strip behind it is very, very narrow. So what you see me doing right now is cutting out a chunk of that blue paper. And what I will do is rip that floral paper and then I'm going to lift the rest of that floral border and kind of tuck in that blue chunk of paper. I'm just going to glue it right on top of the border that's already there. And yes, there is a little seam there, but honestly, when all of the flowers are on top of it, you can't see it. So this was just kind of an afterthought. And now I'm ruffling up the ripped area, and then you'll see me play with the flowers. And honestly, it has less of an impact than what I hoped it would probably because these flower pieces are so huge. They are beautiful though. Anyway, I am playing around with it and later on I do kind of come in and I ruffle back that rift area a little bit and at the very end I come in and I add a bunch of foam adhesive there. So I do think it has an impact. It just has less of an impact than I thought it would. Now what I'm going to do is adhere those photos. I know they're going to go there and then I will adhere my floral pieces, I think, and then the title. So basically, I am working right now on the right-hand page, and then I'm going to move over to the left-hand page. So there I go, adhering these floral pieces. And I really like that one with the yellow balls that's kind of hanging down. It's, I'm not sure what that is. I guess it's some kind of plant, but I do like the way that looks. I'm coming in with some leaves. Again, I feel like I'm kind of covering up that whole ripped area. So it's like, um, it's kind of like counterproductive what I'm doing here. But in the end, maybe you'll see it more in the still shots in the end, it does have a certain texture in that area. For that blue flower, I am popping it up with some foam adhesive. And now what I'm going to do is work on the title. So I actually start at the bottom here because I definitely want friends to more or less land on that border. And I'm placing it a little bit away from the photos. That's because I want the words to be kind of staggered. So I'm going to start with a little bit closer to the left, closer to the photos. So you can see these alphas are really, really straight. So I was using my T-square to keep those alphas really straight up and down. Now what you see me doing is just putting the word with on top of it. I love cutting out, die cutting alphas. Number one, you can do it with such small pieces of paper and in any color you want, and you never run out of a letter. So that's really, really fun. They also happen to pair really well with these title sheets. So this one here I'm using, it's a perfect day. I hope my title doesn't read a perfect with day friends. Anyway, it's supposed to read a perfect day with friends. So that's what it is in my mind. Anyway, I do end up kind of moving those flower pieces at the top to accommodate my A. Anyway, I don't know if you saw that or not. What I'm doing right now is moving over to the left-hand page. So I know those photos are going to go just underneath that border and there's going to be a white space underneath it. And underneath there, that's where I plan to do my journaling. It's also where I plan to create my middle size embellishment cluster. I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use that color print on the left hand page. So now I'm working with the florals there. So I am just basically repeating what is in the top right corner, but I'm trying to keep it smaller because I definitely want them to have different visual weights. So I'm more or less happy with that. I'm going to adhere all of this down. At this point, I decide I'm going to go with the black and white photo. Boring it may be, but I just happen to like it better. Anyway, now I'm adhering the flowers down and the leaves. And for that blue one, once again, I'm going to pop that one up 
with a bit of foam adhesive. Now, at this point, I definitely need my journaling, of course, and I need some finishing touches. Usually, I wait until the very end to add my journaling. However, for whatever reason, I feel this time the writing underneath that photo on the left-hand page is going to have kind of a decorative impact. So what I do is I stop the film and I go do my journaling because I don't want to add my finishing touches before adding my journaling in this case because I think it's going to have a decorative impact. So off camera, what I did was I wrote my journaling on the computer, I printed it on vellum, and I kind of justified it to the right, and then I ripped it and adhered it underneath those photos. And now I'm coming in with some finishing touches. So basically what I did was I went into the chipboard sheet, I put a flower and two leaves in that bottom right hand corner. So that's my tiny embellishment cluster and a repetition of the two other embellishment clusters. I also went in and put some butterflies, chipboard butterflies, in each one of those floral clusters. And now I'm coming in with a little bit of foam adhesive and I'm popping up some of those flowers along with the leaves. So that basically is it. Here is the finished layout. And off camera, I added a blue leaf to each of the two main clusters. And I also adhered a sticker tab to the middle photo on the left and a sticker in the cluster in the bottom right. But that is basically it. I hope I've inspired you to do some scrapbooking. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel, we would be thrilled if you did. The same thing for my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Don't forget to check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for these fun supplies and more. Also, head on over to the Scrapbook Nerd Friends Group Facebook page. We have an online crop happening January 27th to 29th, 2023. And you have an extra week to complete your challenges. Take care and I will see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.